What are the best ways to EDC a fixed blade? Other than obviously this. I spent the last year trying every kind of fixed blade I could come across and all the different ways to carry them. And here are seven of the best ways to carry a fixed blade every day. I do want to take a quick second to thank the channel sponsors. These are brands that we love, we've worked with for a long time, and they've helped us make this channel possible. And first up, we have Big Idea Design. And since we're on the topic of fixed blades, recently I told you about their production version of the Lookout. But here we have that very production version of the knife and a very easy pocket carry solution because they have developed their own very high retention titanium pocket clip. It comes with an ambidextrous sheath and goes in quite easily has really nice retention so you can get your knife out quite easily those are on kickstarter right now hang on you're just supposed to silence your phone sorry uh i dropped my knife the other day i didn't even bother to pick it up there was no point if you like that and want some more dad jokes you can sign up for WorkSharp, which is our other channel sponsor they have a text club they're not going to send you ads just dad jokes there's a link for it in the description now back to fixed plates. So for the longest time, I did not EDC fixed plates. I was exclusively carrying folders and I only used fixed plates basically for camping and in the kitchen. But that's mainly because for EDC, the sheath is the make or break for the knife. How you have to carry that knife is crucial for EDC and there weren't a lot of options. I would say that a lot of fixed blade makers would make amazing knives and the sheaths were just an afterthought but in the last, say, three to four years, the options for carrying fixed blades on your person, say in a pocket or not necessarily exclusively a belt carry, have gone wild. There's a lot more options now, not just in sheaths, but in clips for Kydex and a lot of other stuff. So I spent a lot of time trying a bunch of different options last year. I really went ham on fixed blades in 2023. And now I'd say I carry them as much, if not more, than folders. So the very first would be the leather pocket sheath. This is really what got me into carrying a fixed blade every day. And I would say one of the biggest pros about a leather pocket sheath is how low it allows the knife to ride in the pocket. You'll see with some of these other options, when you have a knife in your pocket, the handle sticks out a lot. And that's because it's using Kydex for retention. This doesn't, and it allows the knife to ride really low in the pocket. There's still enough for you to grab the knife and use it and put it back away. I really like these, especially after they're broken in, which brings us to one of the first cons of a leather pocket sheath. There's a bit of a break in period and sometimes the retention's so tight that when you try to pull the knife out, the whole sheath comes out of your pocket as well. But once it's broken in, as you can see here, they work really, really nicely. A second con to a leather pocket sheath is just how much room it's going to take up in the pocket. So because that knife is riding so low in the pocket, this takes up more pocket real estate, and sometimes these sheaths are a little wider than they would be if it were Kydex, so they take up a lot of crucial real estate in the pocket, but there are some that are really slim as well. Now, in the last video where we talked about my 10 favorite fixed blades to carry, I mentioned a bunch of these leather sheath makers, but I didn't really mention how to get them, where to get them, so let's talk about some of these leather makers really quickly. So the first thing you should note about these leather pocket sheaths is some makers do offer them with the knife. It's kind of rare, but it's happening more and more. But if not, there are a lot of makers that you can go to and get one. These are the four that I've used. The one you've probably seen the most is this Roke. These are for a set number of knives that he supports, I guess. He'd like to do more. He and I have talked about it in the past. Trevin and I have talked about uh, me sending him some fixed blades so he can get templates for others, but you know this BMKT EDC one and the Bradford Guardian He's got a few others on his website uh, But these are really really nice and again 150 and up for these the next one is probably my favorite leather sheath Honestly, this is from pair drop leather for the Griffin Co Scout uh, This one rides super low in the pocket these on his website are listed at 60 to 90 dollars I I don't know about that pricing, but uh, these are really, really sweet if you can get your hands on one of those. Next up, this is probably the best option if you have a knife and can't find a leather pocket sheath. You can commission one from Oak City Leather Goods, um, and these come with Ulti Clips. He has different options available. You can do thread color, leather color. This one rides really well in the pocket as well, and if you like that Ulti Clip, this keeps that sheath locked in your pocket so the knife comes out, the sheath doesn't, which is really nice. And then we have the DP Steel and Leather clip sheath this is for the ak1 or the ak2 but 
the sheath for the AK-1 is made in, I think this is actually the same exact sheath, but it's made in a way that it's sort of universal if you're looking for a knife or a sheath for a knife that's about the size of the AK-1. It does work universally. It'll, over time, kind of mold to the knife that you want in there. Um, and then there's one other, which is tailored by Cortez. I know there's probably many other leather sheath makers, but those four that I have here and then tailored by Cortez, I think his range from 100 and they do go up based on leather and, and other configurations but that is who i would recommend for leather sheaths these right here and then also tailored by cortez i think you have one from him as well right yeah ricky has one from tailored by cortez um yeah so that's leather pocket sheaths they're awesome and probably one of the best ways to edc a fixed blade in my opinion obviously in the first one i mentioned leather pocket sheath and that's because number two is also a pocket sheath in its own right this is the ambi sheath from offensive industries but it is a kydex sheath and as the name suggests it's ambidextrous so you can take the knife out and put it back in in a different way so what's really nice about that is you could carry it in your right front pocket like i have here with this little wicket but you could also move it to another pocket I don't carry it over here, but if I needed to for some reason, I could, and it goes in the correct way. It doesn't matter which way the knife goes in the sheath. And that's the other thing I really like about these offensive industry sheaths is they're really wide and you can just drop the knife in. You don't have to guide it in. A lot of the time with a leather pocket sheath, you have to guide that knife in so that it doesn't like stick into the leather on one side or another. This, because it's hard, it just kind of drops into place. This uses a discrete carry concepts clip on the sheath so the sheath never comes out right even if i grab the sheath and pull it catches on the lip of the pocket so the sheath never comes out of my pocket so you always know that when you reach down and grab this just the knife is coming out which is really really nice so one con to the offensive industry sheath is they, they can kind of adapt to different sizes and shapes but they're made to the knife so for example i have two wickets here that look to be identical in dimensions and stuff this was actually meant for a different micarta wicket but this one fits in here fine and it doesn't really shake out that easily you can shake it out if you go really hard but this wooden handled one is negligibly thinner and it can be shaken out which obviously if it's in your pocket it's not that big of a deal but i'd rather have a little bit stronger retention than this allows so you have to use the kydex sheath for the knife that it was intended for even if the dimensions are slightly different on the bright side offensive industries josh can custom make you one of these sheaths for whatever knife you have you'll have to send it to him but he can make one of these sheaths for basically any fixed blade so that is a really nice benefit and pricing on these sheaths is anywhere from 85 to 95 depending on the materials and configuration and everything so a just plain black kydex would be 85 these patterns like this uh navajo this would be 95 or so. So the thing about uh, Offensive Industries, if you want one, especially if you want a custom one made to your knife, you will have to reach out. I do it on Instagram, just Offensive Industries, DM him. Um, and some of these wickets come with Offensive Industries sheaths like this one, this regular wicket. This is called the Offensive Wicket. It's got the uh, textured micarta. It came as a combo here. Uh, and this one also did, well, the other wicket that came with this, it came as a combo. I bought it directly from Tom. Um, so yeah, you can get them direct, but you also may need to just custom order. Best way to do that is to DM Josh. So this next one is actually kind of related to the offensive industry sheath because all of these feature the discrete carry concepts clip, which I learned about from TKL Knives when they gave me a Piranha a couple of years ago. And it's, it's the same clip, but the way this works is you can push this down in your pocket and just pull the knife. It clips so well, so easily, I love these clips and they're pretty affordable they're like 12 bucks um, and they work on basically anything that's got these standard spacing for your kydex sheaths you just push it down pull up it's just so so nice so that is what comes on these offensive sheaths but you can buy them on their own and apply them to anything you can put it on uh, conceal carry for in waistband you can do so many things with these but as a pocket solution for a fixed blade they are awesome so the thing to know about these discrete carry clips is that again if you pull the knife sheath stays knife comes out but to remove the whole thing you need to pick up on that clip and make sure that that barb clears the edge of your pocket that's what's making it stay in your pocket so well if there were one con for the discrete carry clips i'd say that it really just comes down to 
less a con for the clip and more for the kydex that comes with your knife if it doesn't have standard spacing you can't use it or you'll have to make another sheath or get another sheath for your knife so that you can so that's really not a con of the clips themselves but just the application and it also applies to a few others on this list so you guys are probably pretty familiar with this one this is the ulti clip and just like the discrete carry concepts clip this one has a million different sizes and it works very similar as well so you have this curve to the clip that locks it in your pocket and then this snaps down and this thing truly locks into your pocket if you have this double locked it's not coming out so let me demonstrate slides in very easily clips in that's not going anywhere sometimes they can slide side to side but really if it's working like it should it's not going anywhere at all so you can grab the knife yank it even if you've got a really high retention kydex sheath this is not going anywhere and there are also some leather sheaths that use this and some leather pocket sheaths that have holes so you can install this if you want but this right here is just a small ulti clip they're about 14 15 dollars and they work incredibly the biggest con for the ulti clip that i can find i'd, I'd say there's two one sometimes they clip so hard it's actually hard to unclip them and two they can completely shred your pockets uh, worse than any other clip solution or pocket sheath or folding knife clip that I've ever come across, these things just shred pockets. And I think it's because they kind of have a sharp edge to them. And when they're in your pocket, when you're pulling, even though it's not moving, it's kind of pulling at the fabric, right? If I'm doing this and I clip it down and I pull, it's pulling at that fabric. And that's where it ends up tearing and, and messing up pants. So another benefit to the Ulti clip that you don't get with any of the other options on this list is that you can clip it to things like say a backpack strap i'm just using this as an example you can clip it to straps and it kind of stays in place it can slide back and forth but it's not going anywhere it's going to stay on that strap any of these others it's going to flop around slide off fall off but with the ulti clip you can just cinch it down on something like a backpack strap or really anything that's got some webbing or thin fabric you can clamp this thing and it's really not going to go anywhere the downside, so I guess, I guess another con, is that if you have something that has a lip like this, when you go to remove it, it can catch. You can see how that caught, and it's harder to remove this. That one's not a really good example. I had it here a second ago, and it, it's actually really tough to get it off of things that have like a thick seam. Even if you reach down in there, and it, it's tough. It can get kind of stuck in places at times, but I mean kind of win some lose some ulti clips i would say have more versatility than any of the others on here they're 15 bucks and they have a number of sizes i really like them but they're not my favorite for edc fixed blades so the next one is actually one that i had in my pocket this morning this is a tpk raptor that i got this weekend and i threw the vero engineering titanium clip for fixed blades which i think is the official name onto the sheath so this came with nothing and i just threw this on because it has standard spacing and you just bolt it on the way this differs from say the discrete carry clip or an ulti clip or a leather pocket sheath is that joseph designed this to have just the right amount of tension so that you can choose kind of on the fly how you want to interact with the knife when you reach for it it's kind of harder to explain and easier to demonstrate so if i slide this into my pocket it goes in pretty easily and then if i want just the knife you can just pop that very easily and if you want the whole thing i just grab i put my thumb on the sheath and pull the one thing i would say that i don't love the biggest con about this is this little hole right here this little gap like i said earlier the leather pocket sheaths the knife rides really low in the pocket but any of these with kydex and a clip you're typically dealing with like a lot of the handle sticking out of your pocket and then you have interference right here between the handle and the clip where sometimes you can't get your hand in there this one's not so bad but i had this on another knife before and i had to take it off because i couldn't even get my hand around the handle of the knife and anytime i wanted to pull it, it you just had to hope that you could just grab here and pull the knife out and it just it didn't work so that's probably the biggest drawback to the vero clip a perfect example of this is with this prototype clip that i actually have on the vero axon fixed blade you can see how much longer this clip is and he shortened it i think because of this but here, you can't even get your finger between the clip and the knife. You have to go here, and it works, but you have to, like, know that, right? It's just it's just one of those things. That's a good point, Ricky. 
So in the previous video, I said, that's a good point, Ricky. And then I never actually said what Ricky said. <laughs> Ricky just made a good point. The price point on the Vero is also, I mean, it's titanium, it's $55. And these other clips are 12 and 15 bucks. So it's a several factor increase in price, but it's also pretty nice. So the next one I've actually had on this whole time, it's a neck knife. And if you had asked me maybe five, six months ago, I would have told you that neck knives are dumb and I don't like them and I was wrong. I started carrying this around the time of Georgia Bushcraft because I saw a lot of other people doing it and I was trying it with the Viking Whetstone. I kind of like it. I'm not going to lie. Now there are a lot of drawbacks to it. There are a lot of positives, but there are some con like negatives. The biggest drawback to a neck knife is probably that it's the least socially acceptable way to carry a fixed blade because it's just out in the open. It's right here and you're gonna get some looks. Even in a place like this, where I live, where everybody's got a knife and nobody seems to care ever, a neck knife is gonna get you some weird looks, especially if you walk through the door to my house where my wife always shoots me a look if I have a neck knife on. Sorry, Alex, it's just convenient. Actually, I'm not sorry, <laughs> but on the flip side, it's also very easy to conceal. You just drop it under your hoodie and you're good to go. The other side of that is that it's about to get warmer and I'm probably not going to be wearing hoodies for much longer, maybe a week or two, and then it's going to be too hot to ever wear a hoodie again until fall. So it's fine when there's a shirt between the knife and your body, then you got a hoodie on the outside concealed. When it's just a t-shirt, this is very uncomfortable against your chest. So there's a lot of give and take with a neck knife, but it's hard to deny one of the best things about it is just how easy it is to access your knife, cut things, and then put it away. You gotta give it a glance so you don't put a knife through your chest or your neck, but it is just really convenient to have. I started carrying it this way when I was out in the woods and I really like this. This is not something I'm gonna do every day. It's very limited in how I'm gonna carry a knife like this, but when it makes sense, it makes a whole lot of sense. And the other thing is it gets all this stuff out of your pockets. It puts it right here. It's really nice. Uh, this is a wicket, but you can do this with any small knife. Like the TPK Raptor I had earlier, uh, if it's a small knife and it has these two holes in the end, that's probably a good indicator that they intended for you to maybe use it as a neck knife if you wanted. Those two holes. The old TPK Raptor had one hole in the end and you can't do that. Now he's updated it where there's two. So you can do it with the Minimalist, a bunch of other knives, and you don't have to use this Viking Whetstone either. Right? You could just use paracord or any kind of rope. So you can turn basically any knife into a neck knife very, very easily. So neck knives, I used to say they were dumb, but they're kind of awesome. Just saying. All right, so we're at the last one here and that is a leather belt sheath. Honestly, it's my least favorite of all of these for carrying a fixed blade day to day, but there are some benefits. Just like with a neck knife, it gets the knife out of your pocket and clears up some room there, which is actually kind of nice. One of the biggest cons, there's actually a few, uh, is just access to the knife. It's, you gotta get your jacket out of the way, your shirt out of the way to get the knife out, use it and then put it back, which you gotta get that stuff back out of the way and not stab yourself in the side and then getting the knife back in the sheet. It's just the least convenient way to use a knife. That's why a lot of these bushcraft people, when we go to Georgia Bushcraft, they're wearing drop sheets which I'm not gonna do day to day because I want something I can at least mostly cover with my shirt like that. Um, and that's another thing, concealability. If you got a fixed blade on your belt, most of the time people are gonna know that you got a fixed blade on your belt, which that gets into like legal issues with North Carolina and concealing a fixed blade and all that, but that's beside the point. Hell, most of the time that I'm carrying a knife in a belt sheath like this, it's because the knife itself is so good that I'm willing to overlook the sheath, like this wicket, this wooden handled wicket I mean, come on, that thing is sweet. And then this one, this is probably my most carried knife that's on a belt sheath. This is the collaboration we did with LT Wright and uh, Carry Commission, the Python Micarta Magna Cut Steel on the Frontier First. I mean, this thing is sweet. I love this little knife, but worst part about it, belt sheath. Like, I should probably look into getting one of those other sheaths commissioned for it or just suck it up. That's what I normally do. I just throw it on the belt. It's not so bad because it's such a small knife, but uh, you could also probably neck knife this thing. Put a little loop there. I've seen some people do that, but getting the knife out of the, yeah. Anyway, least favorite way to EDC a fixed blade, but I still do it, 
is with a belt sheath. Yeah, so there are seven of my favorite ways to EDC a fixed blade. Like I said, I EDC a fixed blade most of the time now. I just really like them. I think they're convenient because you don't have to worry about moving parts. They're easy to clean. There's a lot of reasons to carry. So let me know in the comments down below what your favorite way to EDC a fixed blade is. And if I missed one, if there's one that I should check out that I didn't mention in this video, let me know in the comments down below. That's it. I'll see you guys in the next video. And until then, carry on.